In 2009, two individuals from a larger climbing group in the north of Iran were admitted to the hospital with some concerning symptoms. They were closely watched, but when one of them worsened and suddenly lost consciousness, they brought the rest of the group in. Over the next 48 hours, they would experience a dizzying array of symptoms, from dry mucosa and vomiting, to severe sweating, euphoria, and even hallucination. Allegedly, this was all due to the consumption of wild lettuce. Despite the existence of the case, wild lettuce is used around the world as both a food and an herb. So what's going on here? Is wild lettuce really toxic? Are we all just one misstep away from a dizzying array of symptoms? Is there a way to avoid it? We're going to investigate all of it. Let's first dig into this case to get a better sense of what's going on. This all transpired in North Iran, likely around Gorgon, where the medical university that published this article is. The eight individuals were from a climbing group and had consumed, quote, a great deal of the herb wild lettuce. It is mentioned that the doctors relied on the patient history for their suspicion of wild lettuce. This is all going to be important later on. The symptoms observed included pupil dilation, dry mucosa, nausea, anxiety, hallucination, and more. The array of symptoms is interesting because they line up just about perfectly with that of hyoscyamine poisoning, and the authors mention this as well. Hyoscyamine is a potent plant chemical that is in the same class as those found in plants like deadly nightshade, Atropa belladonna. So the question then becomes, does wild lettuce contain hyoscyamine? I'm glad you asked. A paper published in 1892 titled The Existence of a Midriatic Alkaloid in Lettuce by T.S. Diamond reports midriatic which is a medical term for pupil dilating effects from wild lettuce and attributed them to a chemical that they isolated, which was believed to be hyoscyamine. Case closed. Mm, let's keep going. There are several subsequent papers that either back or refute the study's findings, but the final one that I could locate was a 1933 study, The Midriatic Activity of Lacticaria by the Munch Method, by Munch at all. They tested four different methods of extracting hyoscyamine from lacticarium and three from actual dried lettuce samples. They then looked for midriatic activity on cats and found none. So we really have inconclusive support for the presence of hyoscyamine in lettuce, but maybe something about the drying or heating affected the content of hyoscyamine? Not likely, according to Maud Greaves' account of another hyoscyamine-containing plant, henbane. She writes in her book, A Modern Herbal, neither drying nor boiling destroys its, henbane's, toxic principle, hyoscyamine. So it's not likely that this was causing inconsistencies, and it will also be important in my own account of using wild lettuce later on. Okay, let's take stock of what we've learned so far. We have these acute poisoning symptoms, likely hyoscyamine. We found dubious at best evidence for the presence of hyoscyamine in wild lettuce, let alone in mounts that would cause the symptoms observed and the suspicion of wild lettuce to begin with came from a patient history of a group of climbers. Hmm. This just isn't adding up. And I'll tell you what I think is really going on here. First off, my guess is that these climbers were seeking some kind of psychological response. You do not eat copious amounts of Lactuca verosa or Seriola on accident because it tastes bitter and acrid. So bitter. Yeah, oh, it's so better. In addition, I don't trust the capability of these individuals to positively identify Lactuca. I think the ID was wrong to begin with and that they actually consumed a different plant entirely. But can we find further evidence to support that? Let's look at the range of overlap of several other known hyoscyamine containing plants. Datura, Jimsum weed, Atropa, Deadly Nightshade, and Hyoscyamus, Henbane. Looking at this map, they all occur in the area of question. Now, here is a side-by-side -side photo of henbane with wild lettuce in the rosette stage. I could definitely see someone unseasoned in plant ID mistaking these two. And for my money, this henbane is the true culprit of the poisoning. The climbers may have heard of some of the psychological effects of wild lettuce. They were eager to find it, willing to tolerate the bitter, acrid taste. 
so better. And inexperienced enough to misidentify what was actually the hyocyamine containing henbane as wild lettuce. This is, of course, conjecture and my own opinion. To confirm this, we would need a modern chemical analysis on Lactuca virosa or Seriola to truly determine if it may contain hyocyamine or not. But let me give you one more reason why I don't think it contains it. As you may have guessed from some of my videos, I've used wild lettuce a fair bit. I have harvested, extracted, and concentrated Lactuca seriola for my own personal purpose of aiding with sleep. I've taken what I consider to be fairly large doses, and from what we've learned earlier about hyocyamine not being removed from drying or boiling, if it was in the plant at all, it should be in my extract. In my years of using the plant, I want you to know that I have never experienced anything close to the symptoms presented in the toxicology case. And if you're worried about the case, just don't eat a great deal of Lactuca virosa or Seriola raw, which is easy because it tastes awful. I don't even think you get concentration strong enough to have any meaningful effects, so there really is no point. As for the more edible, non-bitter varieties like Lactuca canadensis or Bianus, in my, we'll call it research for this video, I ate over four cups raw on an empty stomach in one single sitting. I experienced zero ill effects. Now, with all this info, do we just throw caution to the wind? No, absolutely not. At the end of the day, wild lettuce is an herb, and herbs contain chemicals, and chemicals do things. Two that we know about are adenosine receptor agonist and an acetylcholinesterase inhibitor. Too much of those things is certainly bad. Thankfully, opioid-related overdose is not a concern with wild lettuce, as they do not contain any opioids. And because the fear alone of experiencing adverse symptoms can lead to them happening when they wouldn't have otherwise, if you aren't completely confident in the safety of what you're doing, don't do it. There are two more possible safety concerns about wild lettuce that I really want you to know about. And the first is the presence of latex, the sap that you see wild lettuce exude when it is cut is indeed a latex. However, latex allergies are typically specific to latex derived from rubber trees in the Hevea genus, not from members of the aster family like wild lettuce. Cases of lettuce contact allergy have been reported and you can read more about them in the links that I've provided in the description below. The chemicals of wild lettuce are known to have pain relieving and sedating effects. If you're already taking medications with similar actions, it's probably best to consult with a medical professional before using something like wild lettuce and also just in general. And if you're interested in preparations of wild lettuce, don't try to just shove a bunch of it down your throat. Watch this video instead. I'll see you there.